How's it going there guys? In this video we're going to be taking a look at the AM3 and its brand new harmonic mount that succeeds from the AM3 from ZWO and also is the little brother to the AM5N and the AM5 original if you like. It's a very interesting mount at a quite a tantalizing price point I would say. It's certainly not the cheapest harmonic mount out there. I think it's totally fair to say that but it's also not the most expensive and uh, as with anything the proof of the pudding is in the tasting so let's get straight on with that as quickly as possible before we do i just want to say a huge thank you to 365 astronomy for sending this mount over for review i uh, i really appreciate the help that those guys have given in making this whole thing come together so thank you to them please do check them out using the link in the description box just down below now in the box you will be greeted of course by a, a nice storage case in there which I think it's a nice enough unit, but it's maybe a little bit bulky. It's quite large for such a diminutive mount. There is, of course, a instruction manual, as you would expect. And one of the other really big things that I like about particularly the ZWO mounts is they come with an individualized report card for your mount. So they test them all at the factory. They go through quality control properly. They don't get sent out unless they're, you know, within spec. So uh, the great thing about that is you know exactly what you're buying, what your money's going into, and uh, you can hopefully, you know, avoid any unexpected gremlins or, you know, nasties popping up when you do finally get the clear skies and the opportunity to test this thing out. Uh, you'll know that if you're seeing any issues, it's probably not your amount. It's uh, most likely your tripod or something like that that can uh, often be a weak point now as i've just kind of alluded to like any mount it's only as good as what it's attached to so if you're going to be fixing this to uh something i don't think it'd be a great match for perhaps like a permanent observatory mounting on a, a great big column obviously it's going to perform at its best there but why would you want an ultra portable mount for that so for my testing, I've actually put it on the ZWO TC40 carbon tripod. Now, it's a great tripod. It's not the strongest mounting option out there, but I think it was totally in keeping with the uh, the overall theme of this mount, which I think is portability, usability, you know, light weight. That's really the, uh, the, the key thing about this, and it really is notable as well when you put together a real true lightweight rig. Um, it almost invites you to use it more and uh, more on that later anyway but that's what i used it with it's been the tc40 now when opening the box you are greeted and i mean greeted by that beautiful new red anodizing finish that said we were using it's, it's they've always been red gear of course but this new kind of textured deep red it just exudes quality it puts me in my happy place Certainly, I like to see gear looking nice because it costs so much. Let's face it, it might as well look flash too. Obviously, the hand controller is in the box, as you would expect. You're probably not going to need it, though, in most scenarios, unless you're using this thing for, let's say, grab-and-go visual uh, astronomy. As, as one example, I also did find another use case for it. Um, I My power bank ran out one night, and I just couldn't be bothered to set everything else up with another bank, so I just powered them out up plugged in the hand controller and hit the home button so you can rehome the mount um, as you you know there's no physical clutches on these things so if you do wish to re-index the uh, the mount you have to power it in order to do that but um, yeah having the hand controller allowed me to rehome everything after a uh, <laughs> unexpected power loss now these new n series mounts are indeed an upgrade of the original series of mounts from uh, zwo again like i've said please don't feel like i'm trashing the original zwo am5 am3 i own an original am5 i'm still very very happy with it it's a wonderful mount so uh, i'm just talking about what's changed basically uh, i think the side clutches feel just a little bit more maybe robust maybe more progressive you can get just the right tension on it where things are able to slip but not, you know, creak loose during the night, for example. I don't really like locking things down and undoing every single time. These work great for that. The altitude and the azimuth bolts are all very high quality and they, they move smoothly too, of course. It uses brass parts uh, for that altitude adjustment too, so it's like a self-lubricating material and uh, it should be pretty much maintenance-free and work for a very 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 long time now it does have wi-fi of course built in on these uh, these new n mounts the previous models i think just had bluetooth 
as an option, but you've still got all the usual suspects, USB, I think SD4s on there, I haven't looked because I don't know anybody who uses SD4 <laughs> anymore, but it's still on there, I'm sure it is. And uh, yeah, the, the Wi-Fi seems to be a nice option. I haven't tested it though, so I can't really comment on that. I always just prefer hard wiring where possible, and especially leading me on neatly to the next point on this thing, the through the mount wiring is my single favorite upgrade, hands down really, between these uh, these new N series models and the originals. Uh, the peace of mind that comes with the through mount wiring is, uh, is hard to overstate, especially for someone like me who, uh, yeah, I'm nearby, but I don't really want to be hawking over my mount. Constantly, you know, worried every time he's going to have to perform a slew, you know, I'm going to end up with some kind of cable snag or whatnot. It's a non-issue. It really does remove a lot of headache and uh, I'm a massive fan of the through head wiring. So now I've got everything tied up actually. Now I've finalized my uh, rig. Uh, you won't see that on the time lapse as it's coming up, but it is tied up now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just pretty darn sleek, I have to say. As usual, you can fit a counterweight bar to this. I think it's probably moving a little bit away from the spirit of this particular mount, I would say. Um, but you can indeed fit a counterweight bar to it. The AM5 bar, I think is what it is. That can fit, um, but it's probably a little bit longer than recommended. I'm not sure if they sell a separate bar. For the AM3, um, you know, a little bit short to get less torque. On it overall but i do believe they've lowered the recommended counterweight weight if you will down to three kilograms from like five kilograms on the am5s now there is a little handy feature that's came along with these n series mounts and that is a slot stowed magnetically held allen key which fits most things on the uh, the mount now you will note possibly that uh, a lot of the adjustment bolts and the fasteners on this mount now have uh, through holes on there where I suppose in a pinch if you did get caught out let's say on a cold night you could uh, you could undo them using the shank of that allen key and uh, save yourself perhaps a bit of an uncomfortable time trying to undo a, uh, a tight connector with freezing cold hands I've, I've been there not pleasant uh, I wouldn't make a habit of it though possibly I'm pretty sure that you know this Stainless steel iron key is going to be harder than the anodized aluminium, so you'll probably mar things up eventually over time, but it could save you in a pinch. Now, connecting to the tripod, the TC40, which I've used it with, of course, is as easy as you would expect. It's, it's three bolts. There's, there's nothing really to it. It takes about two minutes from start to finish, I would say, and you're, uh, you're off to the races. So no real comments there. I think the interesting part comes when you compare it side by side, perhaps with the AM5 itself, as I've tried to do for you in these clips. Um, obviously, there's a notable difference in the size between them in terms of the you know the space that they occupy. But uh, the the weight is the real big noticeable thing when you pick the two up. There is obviously quite a change in weight. Um, I'm not sure exactly just how many grams or what you know, kilogram total, it is the difference between them, but it, I can tell you it's immediately noticeable. Now, one other thing you'll possibly have noticed from that side-by-side -side is that the uh, the height difference between the mounts really is quite noticeable, I would say, and, and by height difference, what I mean is not just the body depth, but let's say when mounted, the height of the saddle versus the you know, spread angle of the tripod and why that's important, of course, is with it being a lower overall more kind of squat mount, uh, your likelihood of a tripod collision is going to be higher. So um, if you're going to use this thing on any kind of long telescope at all, you're absolutely going to need a pier extension for this. There's no two ways about it. Um, you've got a little bit more wiggle room with an AM5. It's slightly taller, of course. But really, it's the same case. Uh, if you're going to use it with any kind of a length of telescope, it's going to possibly need a uh, pit extension. But that, for the AM3 in particular, I am going to recommend that you get one uh, for it. So perhaps factor that in at purchase. Now, I didn't need it initially for using this with the SQA55 and 2600 Air rig. Really wasn't any chance of tripod collision going on with that thing but uh, all the same it still bugged me that it was maybe technically possible and uh, in that case to remove that kind of bug from me i uh, i opted to go on aliexpress in my case and purchased a i think it's a 
200 mil pier extension kind of thing. It cost me about 60 pounds in the UK, delivered to my door. It's a well enough made thing. I can't complain about the build. Uh, it came with no instructions, but again, it's really quite a simple thing. I suppose you uh, just bolt your pier adapter, um, tripod adapter rather, to the bottom, and you bolt your mount to the top, and uh, Bob's your uncle. There it is, it's, it's ready to use. Now, there is a notable thing that happened with that. So, the azimuth adjustment bolts, I, I reckon it's got a different setup to the AM5N, which uses kind of like a spring and a clip tensioner. A few of them, I think four set out along the base plate, which gives you a nice even tension at all times when making azimuth adjustments. The AM3 is slightly different. It's, it works fantastic, just as is, as it came out of the box. However, when using it with the pier extension, uh, it did make azimuth adjustments stiff, I will say. So I had to back off the bolts for that pier adapter a little bit in order to get it to be nice and smooth to adjust again. The key thing is, of course, it did the job I wanted. It removed any and all chance of a tripod collision with any telescope I'm likely to use on this AM3, but it also introduced a new problem, <laughs> as, you, as you can expect when you're uh, attaching that kind of pier extension to the top of an already reasonably tall tripod. Uh, you, you're giving the wind and any other external forces more of a mechanical advantage on your mount. It's, you know, it's got a longer lever through which to try to tip your bloody tripod over. So, if you haven't already made use of the uh, the sling, let's say, that comes in my case with that TC40 uh, and some ballast within it, which I just used my power bank for, uh, now would be the time to do that. If you do end up buying one of these mounts and that, you know, the TC40, absolutely do make use of the sling. It's uh, just for peace of mind's sake. Without it, I really feel like there is a likelihood that with a light enough telescope, a strong gust is going to put that thing over because it is just such a light rig overall. Uh, and anything you could do to lessen that risk is just, you, you know, you'd be mad not to. Now, all in, I've used this thing for about five sessions so far, and I've been uh, overwhelmingly happy with it. I will say on my first session, uh, I was actually doing a live stream at the time, so I was just kind of monitoring it to the side while doing other stuff. But uh, I was having a little bit of sawtoothing on the uh, the guiding graph for that first session and after an initial calibration on the guiding. It was still guiding around one arc second total error, but it just looked a little sawtoothy, so I didn't worry about it. I just let it do its thing because the pixel scale that I was imaging at with that SQA55 just never, ever going to be an issue uh, guiding at one arc second. But, uh, you know, the tinkerer in me <laughs> didn't settle, and the next time out, I decided to point in a different area of the night sky, recalibrate the guiding, and I'm happy to say that that eradicated the issue entirely, and now it's guiding sub arc second all the time for every single one of those other four sessions through varied conditions. You know, there's been some bits of wind, some thin clouds, etc., passing through, all the classic stuff which knocks your guiding wonky. It's handled it. It's handled it really well. So uh, I'm very happy overall with it. Now, uh, the main thing that I'm happy about is, uh, oh, well, A, how usable it's been. It's uh, it's not been a pain whatsoever to actually get this thing out and, you know, up and running and used. And I can't really say the same is true for heavier, more complex rigs. Well, you can do more, technically, with perhaps a, you know, much larger telescope and uh, and a, you know, far more complex rig. Are you going to do more in reality when it's uh, it's much more difficult and involved to get set up? For me, the answer is no. Um, it's that kind of saying that's as old as astronomy probably is. The best rig is the one that you're going to use. And, uh, you know, usability, naturally, factors into that. And for me, that goes hand in hand with uh, it being easy to set up and lightweight. And that's that's all the things that this absolutely is uh when i paired it with that air camera of course there's, there's no worries with anything it just chugs away takes great data and i've taken my best ever image of the veil nebula using this rig so it's already a big win and i'm looking forward to my next session with it when you know whenever that is going to be whenever the sky is clear so i'll wrap it up there and say huge thanks once again to 365 astronomy for their help in getting this whole thing actually up and running and uh, put together 
you know, and uh, thanks to ZWO themselves for working through 365 and making the whole collaboration <laughs> happen in the first place. And uh, as you might expect, the biggest thanks for all goes out to you guys. As always, I, um, you know, all jokes aside, I really cannot possibly thank you enough for the difference that you guys make in my life every month through the support that you give. It's it is out of this world, if you'll excuse the the weak astronomy pun for this channel. Um, you know, uh, I couldn't do it without you. So I want you to know that it's very much appreciated. Uh, it, it really, really is. So thank you. Genuinely, thank you. I'll leave it at that. Anyway, so I'll see you in the next video, whenever that's going to be. And uh, just until then, look after yourselves. And with any luck, clear skies.